In the last video, we looked at the ice table method from a highly theoretical angle. In this video, I want to take a look at some examples and talk about the more practical aspects of solving ice table problems. So, oftentimes these problems will have large prompts because you're going to be given a lot of information about the initial conditions and the K value. In the context of this problem, we're looking at N2 and O2 reacting to form N2O. A balanced chemical equation is given down here. And you do want to pay attention to the phases here when you're writing the equilibrium expression, right? So all of these are gases. So we can go ahead and write an equilibrium expression for this reaction based on the given balanced chemical equation. Let's just go ahead and do that. I like getting that out of the way early because it's a skill that's fairly straightforward and we're going to need to use it later and it's good to kind of have in our pocket. It's also useful for calculating Q, right? Since the form of Q is identical to this just it uses the initial conditions as opposed to equilibrium conditions. So N2O squared in the numerator, N2 squared in the denominator, and O2 in the denominator as well, all at equilibrium when we're equal to the K value. And the K value is given here, it's 3.21 times 10 to the negative 28. So intuitively we can see that K is fairly small, so our equilibrium concentrations should heavily heavily favor the reactant side. We're given initial conditions as well in the form of partial pressures of the reactants and products. 3.21 atmospheres of N2, 6.21 atmospheres of O2, and no N2O. It's not mentioned here, and whenever it's not mentioned, you can assume that the initial concentration of the product is zero. So we can immediately write the initial line for the ice table here. We've got 3.21 2.1 for N2. We've got 6.21 for O2. And we've got 0 for N2O. And all of these, by the way, are in atmospheres. When it comes to the change, we need to consider Q versus K. And that's really important. You may see people who breeze past the Q versus K step, particularly in situations when the product concentration isn't given. And so the product is implied to be 0 initially. Uh, but it's important to think about. So in this case, Q initially must be zero, right? Since the initial concentration of product is zero, we see the product concentration appearing in the numerator of the equilibrium expression, and so Q is equal to zero, and perforce that has to be less than K. So this K value is really, really tiny, but even so, it's greater than zero. And so Q is less than K, this reaction is going to go in the forward direction. From that, we can get the changes, at least the signs of the changes. We're going to get plus 2x, where I'm inserting the 2 because of the 2 here in the balanced chemical equation. We're going to get minus x for O2 and minus 2x for N2. And now at this point, we can write the equilibrium line simply as the sum of the two, 3.21 minus 2x for nitrogen gas, 6.21 minus x for oxygen gas, and for N2O, simply 2x at equilibrium. So we have all that we need to plug back into the equilibrium expression up here, and I'm going to do that on the next slide. I was a little bit sloppy on the last slide and used concentrations instead of pressures in the equilibrium expression, but we're dealing with a Kp here, and so it's important to actually use the pressures. Here I've taken that equilibrium line and plugged in those equilibrium concentrations in terms of x. So I've got 2x quantity squared, since the pressure of N2O is squared, 3.21 minus 2x squared, and 6.21 minus x. And that's all equal to this given k value, 3.21 times 10 to the negative 28. Now here's where things may start to look a little daunting as you get into these problems. We've got an equation that is second degree in x in the numerator and looks like third degree in x in the denominator. This is going to be a mess. This is going to be a mess to solve for x, right? Luckily for us, there is a nice workaround, particularly when the k value is very small. 3.21 times 10 to the negative 8 is a very, very tiny number. And since x shows up in the numerator of this ratio, that suggests that x is probably going to in turn be a very, very tiny number. That means that the difference between a number like 3.21 and even twice the value of x is going to be pretty darn close 
to 3.21. And likewise, the difference between 6.21 and x, this whole quantity is going to be pretty darn close to 6.21. So in this case, we can make what I affectionately refer to as the small x approximation, which is the idea that because k is really small relative to the initial pressures, we can ignore x in terms where x is subtracted from or added to these initial concentrations. So applying the small x approximation here, what we can do then is set the value of k equal approximately to quantity 2x squared in the numerator. Don't mess with x in the numerator. We don't want to remove x terms entirely from the right-hand side of the equation, right? We still need to solve for an x value ultimately. But in the denominator, now we have a massive simplification where all that are left are numbers in the denominator, 3.21 squared times 6.21, and this is easy, easy enough to calculate on its own. And from here, we're going to end up with 4x squared in the numerator and a simple number in the denominator. The whole right-hand side ends up being 0.0625x squared, and that's equal to 3.21 times 10 to the negative 28th power, approximately, right, since we made this small x approximation. In any event, though, we've made our lives a lot easier, right? We just need to divide both sides by 0.0625 and then take the square root of both sides of the equation to solve for x. In doing that, we end up with 7.17 times 10 to the negative 14 atmospheres. And sure enough, if we look at the power on x and the power on the initials as they appear up here in the denominator of the equilibrium expression, x is way, way smaller than those initials. I'm a big fan of actually going back and plugging in this value, especially anytime you apply approximations. Go ahead and, and plug it back in, doing the full expressions here in the denominator and see how close you get to the original k value. This is a good sanity check to make sure that your approximation is reasonable and doesn't cause the value of x to go haywire when you remove x from the denominator terms here. Another sanity check that's even simpler to apply involves just looking at the calculated x value and its ratio to the initial concentrations. If that ratio is less than 5%, in other words, when you multiply by 100%, if you get a number less than 5, then the assumption is certainly valid. When you get in the range of 5 to 10% and above, you're starting to get dangerously close to a situation where the initial concentrations are on the order of k, and so we can't ignore x in those difference terms. Those differences are going to be significantly different from the initial concentrations.